They held a knife on my chin. I'm not sure whether it was still a carving knife or not, but it, it was a relatively big knife. Held it on my chin and said that he was going to cut my throat. And Did you believe it? No, not really. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to calm the situation down by reacting the way I thought they wanted me to react, not, not arguing with them, not protesting. Um, but it, it, was, it wasn't the blade edge of the knife that he had, and it was on my chin, and I thought, if you're going to cut my throat, you're not going to get very far with the knife on my chin. Um, and I could be that flippant because it didn't really seem very serious then, I think. OK, yes, it was a burglary, we were being burgled, it wasn't very nice to be burgled, but we'd live, I'd, we could cope with it. When did it begin to be serious? Uh, it began to be serious when Mantu took me upstairs and brought me into this room, um, this spare room, basically, and uh, told me to undress. He called me a slut, slag, bitch, cow, things like that. I turned off emotionally um, because I knew that was the only way I could get through it. How do you do that? Just let my body take over and function as a machine and just... I don't know how you create a barrier, but I just did create a barrier where everything turned off and rarely surfaced again. There were, there were a couple of times when there must have been emotion still there because I could pray that I wanted to get through it alive um, and pray that, I, that I'd still be able to have kids. You're being forced into a situation that, where it should be loving and totally giving, you just have nothing, absolutely nothing. You're stripped of everything that you've got and you are forced into situations and to do things that are totally alien to you and to do things that you have no control over. And because it's, it's a power struggle really more, more than anything. The, the man wants the power and takes that power and you have no control. Jill Sayward, Will Baroness Helena Kennedy QC joins us. Helena Kennedy, first of all, um, how shocking was it, do you think, for people to hear Jill Sayward give her own testimony, not in court, but to give her own testimony because they pled guilty? The, yes, I, I mean, at the trial, I mean, you've got to remember this was in the, in the 80s, 86, and, um, and although you know, people like myself were campaigning around violence against women and domestic violence and sexual violence and rape, um, we were still having you know, trouble getting this taken as seriously mm -hmm. as we wanted it. And this was an example of it. And Jill Sayward, why, she, why Jill was so important was because she really nailed this thing, which was that here it was the, the, the chap who only committed burglary burglary got, you know, a much higher sentence than those who'd committed burglary and had raped her. And one of the things that the judge was saying was that because she had presented as, as being somehow having survived this trauma intact and presented a good face to, 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 to the world, that somehow um, that was something that should benefit those who'd, who'd committed the crime. Um, it, was, it was just extraordinary. And it, it was about the idea that property offences mm -hmm. carried heavier sentences yes. than the rape of a woman. But the idea <coughs> of waiving anonymity, I mean, you know... It was that, very courageous. That was incredibly courageous. And, and, of course, in one way, I suppose you could say that um, her life was not taken over by the rape, but it was defined to a certain degree by the rape because she chose then to campaign to make it, make the, it couldn't ever be less traumatic for other women, but at least there would be more support for other yes, women. Yes, I mean, I mean, some, some um, survivors of rape who do go public and who do talk about it say they, they, they start feeling that it, it becomes the, the, the defining thing and mm. they don't want that. But Jill, in a way, accepted it yes. um, as being something that, in some ways, had made her the person she was um, and her life became, Im if you like, uh, uh, important because she gave voice to what she'd experienced. But the wonderful thing about it, I mean, Jill actually phoned me. Um, in, at the time, I was interviewed um, because I was one of the, the voices that was, that was, you know, heard on this subject at the time because I was very unhappy with the way that the court was dealing with mm. women in the criminal justice system. And, uh, and she heard me speaking on the radio about it or on television and she phoned my chambers and, and so I called her back. And, uh, and she wanted to know what she could do 
to help with the campaigning. And the thing that I was very keen on at the time was that we should have proper judicial training, yeah. that judges just did not understand this. Because which Justice was Leonard really didn't understand the really level didn't. of trauma. He really, he really didn't. And it was so interesting because um, probably about um, maybe 10 years later, certainly in the 90s, after I'd become a Queen's Counsel, I did a murder trial in front of John Leonard. And, um, and sometimes, as happens when judges are on circuit, he invited myself and the, and the prosecutor attorney the, the prosecuting lawyer in and we both went in both the QC's to have lunch with him and his wife um, at the end of the trial and he said to me you gave me a hard time Helena over the vicarage um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, rape case and I and I said well uh, you know, Justice Leonard uh, it was because I really did feel that the judiciary were not understanding this at the time and he said I got it wrong and that was the interesting thing. He should have said it in public. I know. He should have said it in public. And what I wonder about that as well is the whole question of anonymity. I mean, we, we, we go backwards and forwards over an, the, the anonymity issue, but, I, but is there a sense in which you feel that if women spoke out more, then it wouldn't feel like a different crime? It wouldn't feel like a crime that still has some kind of stigma and morality attached to it, where it's just a straightforward act of violence. It's an act of violence, but it's an act of violence which, of course, is the more horrific because it abuses something that we keep for, for intimacy, yeah. that we keep for something precious in our lives. And so that's why it has that particular other dimension to it. But also, um, for those who are raped, and it's mainly women, I mean, I know that, the, the, yeah. that uh, we have experiences of children, of course, but it's mainly women, and we... And, and, and women feel that it's partly about the humiliation of it. I mean, Jill's thing was she wanted to campaign also to do something about the levels of, of, of sexual um, assault because she was forced to, to do other things. I mean, other yes. things were done to her. It wasn't just um, rape, you know, in, in the traditional sense, you know. And she was forced uh, to have oral sex. She was forced, she was forced to have anal yes. uh, uh, but And she wanted that, that change in definition. And that did come about. Yes. And it was partly about, about Jill being so vocal on it. Yes, and the idea is that uh, rape is, in a sense, what she is. Rape is only shameful for the rapist. It's not shameful for the victim. Absolutely, and and we've got to tr somehow. And get still, to, we're not getting the conviction. We're still not getting. We're still not getting it. And part of it was that Jill, of course, in many ways, was able to get the public support because she was the she was the daughter of a vicar. She was. It was happened in the course of a, yeah. of a burglary and so on. For many women, it happens in privacy. In privacy. They may have been drinking. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the other things that are around often militate against the woman getting justice. And we've got to do something about this business of saying that there are some women who are worthy and there are some women who are not. And we've got to get justice for all. Helena Kenny, thank you very much indeed.